Hola there, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. I'm so grateful to have you here. If you're new, what is up? My name is Julia. I try my best to share realistic, simple, and delicious plant-based meals that you can make during your busy life. And in this one, I'm sharing some simple recipes and meals I enjoyed over the week that will hopefully give you some inspiration in the kitchen. So without further ado, let's dive into these yummy recipes. Although oatmeal is not my favorite type of breakfast, there's also a lot of positives to it. It's easy to make, it's easy to carry along anywhere you go in the world. And to make this one taste delicious, I added a whole banana that I mashed in there and a big chunk of chocolate, lots of cinnamon. It's kind of a texture thing to me. I don't like thick oats where I feel like it's coating the inside of my mouth, but if I make it runny enough, I find it's easy to get down, add lots of peanut butter on top and some nuts and seeds. Well, in this case, just seeds and goji berries. <laughs> As you guys know, I've been traveling for quite some time and I keep a bag with inside of my backpack full of pantry items and oatmeal is a simple one to keep in there along with some pumpkin seeds and some goji berries, peanut butter, you can throw any of that on a breakfast and there you go, hearty, nourishing and delicious. And if you are a traveler or a busy person, sandwiches will become your best friend in this life and that's okay. Sandwiches are delicious and there's so many different types of sandwiches in the world that I don't think you'll ever get sick of them. Because if you get sick of one, then you could just make another one. Anyways, I added a bunch of lemon juice, olive oil, salt and oregano to my lettuce and then I put in some hummus, red onion, sun-dried tomatoes, plopping the other piece of bread on top, cutting it in half and there you go, a fresh, delicious sandwich. There's no protein in this unfortunately because I didn't have any tofu and it's freaking impossible to find tofu in Turkey unless you want to pay like 10 Canadian dollars which would be like you know eight US dollars for one block of tofu. That's silken tofu not firm tofu so you can't really do much with it. Anyways vegan problems in another country. <laughs> I've also gotten really into drinking tea while in Turkey, so having myself a black tea, adding a little bit of hazelnut milk to it as well. I just, I'm a milk in my coffee, milk in my tea type person that is just who I am and how I like it. Let me interrupt this one to say a massive thank you to Sage for sponsoring today's video. As a Canadian, this one is a special one to me because they are a Canadian company with an amazing reputation and I've been using them for 10 years or so. I'm super stoked to share their products with you and if you know who they are, then do not hesitate to click my link down in the description box and use my code JuliaAirs to get 15% off site-wide along with free shipping on all of their products. If you don't know who they are, let me hype them up, give them a real Canadian hype up for a second. They are a natural wellness brand with an amazing aromatherapy collection. So to kick this one off, I have to tell you about my go-to sage roller called Immune. Especially in the cooler weather, it's designed to support your body during cough and cold season because it's powerfully relieving blend providing comfort when you're feeling a little bit under the weather. With tea tree, eucalyptus, and cinnamon, it helps to soothe respiratory discomfort when you roll it over the affected areas like your throat and your chest. I also love to roll a small amount of that underneath of my nose and take some deep breaths because you just, you feel it when you breathe it in and it feels great. <laughs> Something I also love about Sage is the fact that they have rollers like little balls at the end of their essential oils so it makes application extremely quick easy and unmessy i don't love to put essential oils in my hands because i always end up rubbing my eyes so the rollers just make application super seamless and i i love it i think it's i think it's pretty cool pretty unique i also really love their peppermint halo blend for long days where i have a headache i'll rub it on my temples and a little bit on my neck they also have an amazing extra strength roller for muscle aches and soreness so that provides me with a lot of relief as well. Their products are 100% natural and I love that because I personally don't like using any sort of artificial scent. I don't even like using deodorant. I haven't used deodorant since I was like 15 years old. So sometimes, although their products have amazing benefits, I just use them to smell amazing. That's the truth. <laughs> 
Some people may not understand the power of natural remedies, but so many plants here on this planet are here to help provide us with comfort and relief and have been used for those things for God knows how long. I love Sage, I love what they do, and I think you will too. So if you click my link down in the description box and use my code Julia Ayers, you will get 15 15% off <laughs> site-wide along with free shipping on all of their products. This deal is available in the United States and Canada. So click my link, use my code Julia Ayers to get 15% off. Thank you so much to Sage for sponsoring today's video. This one is truly a special one to me as a brand I've been using for so long and have such an amazing reputation. <sighs> Let's get on with the video. If you're one of my regular viewers that watches my what I eat in a week videos, I just want to say that this is not a what I eat in a week video. It's not a smooth transitional video of everything that I ate during the week. It is just some moments of food and recipes and meals, snacks that I got out that I wanted to share with you guys. So I went out to this really cute cafe where the cushions are on the ground and it's just super cozy. I got myself a Turkish tea, an orange juice and some wrapped vine leaves, some stuffed vine leaves I should say. If you're somebody that wants to travel and is worried about accommodation, I highly recommend staying at hostels that feel a little bit more homey. Yes, they're not going to be as luxurious as the more expensive ones with the nice kitchen appliances and blah, 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 blah. But usually in these types of hostels, you get amazing people with amazing stories that have traveled the world and they're looking for more community. They want to have deep conversations with you. They're not just here in this place to party. And I find a lot of the bigger hostels are just that environment. They're people that just wanna go out and drink and not really have interesting conversations about life. So on this night, I made everyone hot chocolate and we just chatted, hung out and enjoyed each other's company. One thing I've really enjoyed about Turkey, Turkey A, is that it's very common in restaurants to have a bunch of dishes laid out in front of you in a window and then you choose what dishes look the best to you and they'll usually have some sort of deal like you pick three or two or five or whatever <laughs> and it's just an amazing way to try a bunch of different dishes. So this cup here is actually a traditional Turkish drink that's not milk, it's not kefir, but it's a dairy product. And I tried it because my host gave it to me. She didn't ask me if I wanted it, she just offered it to me. And I didn't wanna be rude, so I took it and I tried it out. I did not drink the whole cup, just so you guys know. <laughs> I gave it to somebody else because my gut just can't handle that much dairy, but I didn't feel the need to explain to her my dietary restrictions and all of that jazz. I accepted the gift that she gave me and I openly tried it. This may be a hot topic as I know many strong-willed vegans are watching my content. I'm a plant-based person that has been so for over half of my life and I will continue to be so for my entire life. Having a small amount of milk, having an egg every so often doesn't undermine all of the work that I've done to share recipes that are vegan with the world. So about a day or so later, I found myself in another kitchen and in this one I had a lot more space and time to work. So let's make a delicious meal. Starting it off by chopping up a small onion. I feel like that's how you start every single meal. You chop up some onion and you wash some potatoes. Maybe not every meal, but in this case, I washed some potatoes because we're gonna make a herby potato oniony dish along with a tomato and lentil dish. So we're salting a bunch of boiled water, throwing our potatoes in there, and we're gonna allow them to do their thing for you know, a little while until they get nice and soft. While I wait for my pan to get nice and hot with some olive oil in there, I chopped up some greens for a salad that I'm gonna make. I'm using dandelion greens. I'm actually gonna use the butt ends or the stems of the greens in the potato dish as well, just so I'm not wasting. In our salad, I also chopped up some cucumber and in the process of doing all that, our potatoes finished. And instead of draining the water completely because I wanted to cook some lentils, I just scooped all the potatoes out and use the same water to cook the lentils because you know, why waste the water and the salt? I finally got some onions and some garlic into the hot pan with the olive oil. And in the meantime, we're chopping up some coriander while that cooks. 
If you don't like coriander, cilantro, you can swap that out with some basil or some parsley. So into a small pot, I added about half of the onion and garlic mixture that I fried up along with the cilantro and the potatoes, mixing that all together and some lemon juice as well. We're gonna add more before serving, but just to get some flavor in there, I added about a half of a lemon. Once our lentils were finished, we strained them, added some tomato sauce to our onion garlic mixture, along with some tomato paste, black pepper, cumin, balsamic vinegar, and a couple big pinches of salt. Throwing in our lentils as well, mixing that all together and letting that do its thing for about 15 to 20 minutes on low, low heat. We just want the flavors to infuse and everything to marinate, but we're not trying to cook anything because it's already all cooked. A classic balsamic dressing for our salad with some lemon olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, a little bit of agave syrup. And right before serving everything, I squeezed in a half of a lemon's juice into our potatoes, drizzled it with a little bit more lemon olive oil, and there we go our lentil tomato dish, our potato dish with lots of herbiness and onioniness and garlickiness, <laughs> and our salad with dandelion greens, red onions, and two figs. I love fruit in salad. I just find it so refreshing and having a little bit of sweetness into a meal is so yummy as well, especially when it's contrasted with the pepperiness of dandelion greens and the tart freshness of red onion. And of course, the balsamic dressing is just freaking amazing, and I could put it on anything, so no explanation to that. <laughs> I got everything on my plate, and I actually had some leftover naan bread that I'm going to enjoy the lentil tomato dish with, but I would recommend having fresh naan bread with this, or cook some rice as well. Although there are three elements to this meal, it's not complicated whatsoever. We're using very basic ingredients, just a few different spices. It's really just timing, technique, and enough seasoning and spices to make a meal taste delicious. It does not have to be overcomplicated or difficult to throw together a nourishing meal. And the more you get in the kitchen, the more confident you will be in the kitchen. Hey, good morning, I have a tip for you. Don't wash your mushrooms. Stop it, they'll take 10 times as long to brown up if they ever will. So just wipe the dirt off of them. Yes, I'm sorry to anyone that is like, what the hell, you are just gonna wipe dirt off of a mushroom? Yes, yes, take a napkin. You can slightly damp the napkin if you so wish and wipe the dirt away. And if it's really dirty, then just cut the cut the piece off and you're good. Anyways, I threw the mushrooms into a hot pan, realizing that there was too many. And if you crowd your mushrooms, again, they will never brown. So I took some mushrooms out of the pan, enjoyed a fig while they were cooking, and seasoned them with some pepper and some chili flakes. Mind you, I did not season them with salt until the very end. I added about a half of an onion, and once it started to turn translucent, I seasoned everything with salt then. That's the first time salt has touched those mushrooms. I also added some balsamic vinegar, let that cook for about a minute, and then took them off of the heat, added some red onion and some garlic to my pan, along with a bunch of cumin, black pepper, chili flakes, and oregano. We're just warming up the spices a little bit before we add some tomato sauce, along with some tomato paste, a couple big tablespoons worth, classic balsamic vinegar in there. Anytime there's tomato sauce going in the pan, balsamic vinegar has to go along with it. I feel like that is just a rule. I also added some kidney beans, so it's a very similar mixture to the one that we had the previous meal, but with kidney beans instead of lentils. As you noticed, I chopped up some carrot and some sweet potato. I boiled that in some salt water and then fried it up into a pan with a little bit of salt and some olive oil as well. I plated up that along with our mushrooms, some bread, and the tomato kidney bean dish. So kind of similar to the meal that we had prior, but a little bit more breakfast vibes, especially with our orange juice and our coffee beside the meal. Again, even though there's different elements to this meal, it does not mean that it was complicated. I fried up some mushrooms and onions, I boiled some carrots and sweet potatoes, and then fried them up with some olive oil, and I made basically the same dish that I made prior, but with a couple different elements to it. 
serving it with some bread instead of naan bread. It feels like a different meal, even though it's really not all that different than the one that we had before. And because firm tofu is like impossible to find in Turkey, I've been using a lot more beans in my cooking, which is something I don't, I don't do as often as I would like to admit at home. So in different environments, you get inspired by different things and you have restrictions that you may not have in your natural habitat. And then you just have to get a little bit experimental no matter where I am in this world, there will be a stir fry made because it is just my favorite thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> I started off by chopping, I don't know why I went Southern there. I'm just being a weirdo. I chopped up some onion, ginger, and garlic, classic, and threw that into a warm pan. Yes, a warm pan with olive oil. We're not trying to cook these things super fast and I find that the longer you take to cook the first element, onion, ginger, and garlic, the more flavor the stir fry ends up having at the end. So take your time, low heat, low and slow, my friends. Okay, low and slow. I chopped up some zucchini and some red pepper. I gotta stop. I <laughs> seasoned the onion, ginger, and garlic with some soy sauce, threw some carrot, my zucchini and my red pepper in there just fried that up for a hot minute seasoned it with some chili flakes a lot of chili flakes because we know we like things a little bit spicy over here because i needed some protein i would not recommend adding lentils to a stir fry but just because i needed some protein i added lentils to the water before i added the rice noodles I would say low key, the lentils kind of ruined the dish, but it is what it is. I had a balanced meal and sometimes your body is craving that. <laughs> As you saw, I added a bunch of cilantro along with some red cabbage to the stir fry. Again, if you don't like cilantro, trade that out for some basil. I would not recommend doing parsley in replacement just because parsley is a little bit more of a herbaceous, Italian-esque vibe and not really stir fry vibe. For our sauce, we're mixing together peanut butter, soy sauce, a lot of lime juice, and some lemon juice, unfortunately, because I didn't have enough lime juice. Added some chili flakes to it too, and some agave syrup to kind of balance all of the richness and acidity. We got everything in one big pot, mixing it together, adding a splash of water just because the sauce wasn't quite saucy enough, and then I plated her up. I am a person that always finds herself overcooking her rice noodles, don't be me. I didn't in this scene, luckily, I did a good job cooking my rice noodles, but often enough, enough for people to comment on other videos telling me not to overcook my rice noodles, I am slowly but surely getting better at watching the time and not getting distracted. Hey, it's a lot of elements to record things for you guys and do the whole cooking process. I'm switching up angles. I gotta think about the timing of the videotaping. I gotta think about the timing of the cooking, making the sauce, frying things up, not burning things. It's a whole thing, you know? It's a whole thing. And God bless my heart for trying my best, uh-huh. I don't know why I have turned into this person during this video, I apologize. I'm gonna shut up now and um, I'll be back soon. back as normal Julia, no Southern Julia anymore. I am making a pasta salad because pasta salad is just a freaking easy go-to that everyone loves. It's delicious, it's flavorful, it's fresh, it's nourishing, and it's filling, and it can stay in your fridge for a couple days without going gross. So we got a bunch of fresh veggies, chopping up an entire red pepper. We got some red onion and cucumber in there already. And I just cooked up some pasta last night. It was chilling in the fridge along with some peas. I am seasoning the hell out of this with a lot of lemon juice, black pepper, salt, and chili flakes. We're also doing some oregano and some basil, classic herbaceous Italian-esque spices, a little bit of agave syrup to balance out the acidity of the lemon. I'm telling you, adding a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sweetness into a meal is not unhealthy for one. I used to think that. It is so delicious and it makes food addicting and it's amazing. Just mm -mm -mm, absolutely delicious. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and got some value out of it in some way or another. If you make any of these recipes, let me know down in the comments. If you could click the like button and subscribe button, I'd truly appreciate it. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your damn day. I'll see you again so very soon. Mwah!